Can you just imagine in your career that you achieved every single one of your dreams and you can lean back and reflect on your legacy forever? What would get you back into that cauldron? What would get you back to do the job that most people say can't be done? Please join me in welcoming our extra special guest for today, Ross Braun. What did you see that you felt you could add value to that you're coming back to? Um, I said, what's your vision for Formula One? And they said, we don't have one. We want you to give us the vision to take us forward because you're someone who's been very involved with the sport. And I want to take the things I learned in, in terms of creating a team and apply that to how we take Formula One forward. And that's a pretty rare opportunity. I wasn't a great student. I wasn't uh, terribly studious at school and, and in some ways missed some of the opportunities I had. Um, engineering was what, the one thing, physics, science subjects, those were the things that I really found motivated me. You know, sometimes I'm asked about luck. Luck is preparation waiting for an opportunity. You don't know where, for, what, what opportunities are going to be presented to you, but if you get yourself in the right position, if you get your education, if you get the right attitude, if you work well, then when those opportunities come, you're going to be a candidate to take them. I had a couple of years of sports car racing and then had a good opportunity to come back into Formula One uh, with the Benetton team. And that's where I started working with Michael Schumacher, which really was preparation, looking for an opportunity. So, <laughs> when I was building my teams, my approach was to be eventually become a friendly dictator. And by that, I mean that I was prepared to take the decision in the end. But I didn't want to take the decision alone without full consultation and full engagement. We'd have a challenge, we'd have a problem, I'd gather those people together, put it on the table and start to hear the opinions and chair the meeting and start to steer it until I felt comfortable that we'd reached a good conclusion and then say, right, this is a decision we're going to make, I'm going to make, and you've all got to be 100% behind it and because you've all had the opportunity to, to engage and give your views. Formula One is a bit of an oil tanker. It's difficult to move, but if you don't try, it never will. So what is that better direction? For me, it's to have um, sustainable budgets for the teams, a combination of cost controls, technical regulations, sporting regulations, uh, level the field off more. There's too much differential between the front and the back of Formula One. And also then make the cars uh, raceable. So at the moment, the cars, the technical configuration of a car, I believe, makes it very difficult for the drivers to race each other. And we need to change that so the drivers can have wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat and the, drive, the cars can follow each other and they should be exciting. They should have lots of power. They should look great. They should engage the fans and, and make it exciting for the fans. When I went to Honda, they said to me, what's the silver bullet for success? And I said, the silver bullet is there is no silver bullet. And if that makes sense, it, there is no magic trick to, uh, to building a team and success. It's, it's attitude common sense, consistency, honesty, integrity, all the things we all know. It's not, there is no magic, it, it's, it's common sense. That isn't always that common. That's a good point. <laughs> Thank you, Ross, for a fabulous thing.